Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining our webinar, Four Ways to Upgrade Your Online Commerce Experience. Our speakers today will be leaders from Big Commerce, Red Stage, and Three Kids. Uh, please ask any questions in the chat bot or in the Q&A section, and we'll take some time at the end to answer them. And with that, I'll turn it over to the speakers. Great. Uh, thanks, Bella. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm the Vice President of Marketing at 3Kit. And uh, today we're going to be going through, uh, we're showing you a lot of our 3D and augmented reality. I'm joined by uh, Tony Lopez on my side, who's uh, a sale a solution engineer. And good morning, everybody. My name is Megan Saylor. I'm Vice President of Product Marketing here at Big Commerce. I'm delighted to be here with both 3Kit and Red Stage, some amazing partners that we have in the ecosystem. Hello, everyone. My name is Christopher Yin. I'm the creative director for Fulcrum and Red Stage. And we uh, do all sorts of things from B2B to uh, IT solutions. Great. So why don't we, um, uh, you know, what we're going to do is kind of laying out the, the idea for this webinar. And Svela, if you kind of want to go back a slide, actually, um, Probably should have started with this, guys. What we're covering is um, sort of four tactics and strategies that you can take on to develop a better commerce experience. We're focusing a lot on B2B and also a, a B2C scenarios here. Um, the plan is we'll have Megan lead through on big commerce, uh, talk about their amazing uh, e-commerce uh, open SaaS framework. Uh, I'll hit in on 3Kit and talk about what we're doing. Um, mostly leave a lot of room for Tony to show demos about, about our 3D and AR, and then we'll toss it over to Chris, uh, talk about Red Stage and how they're implementing sort of the latest AR trends and strategies um, in the marketplace. So uh, I'll toss it over now to, uh, to Megan, talk a little bit about the big commerce side. Great, thanks. Uh, let's go to the next slide and get this kicked off. So I'm hoping that a lot of what I talk about is not necessarily gonna be new news to you all, but I really wanna sew some threads that both Mark, Chris, and Tony can pick up on further on in the presentation when we talk about what's changing in e-commerce. Why is there now a need for augmented reality in 3D and what's actually going on? And why is it important that if you're a merchant, whether you're B2B or even B2C or the hybrid of B2B to C, should you be considering how these new immersive technologies can really advance and help with your conversion rates and everything else that's going on. But before I get to that, if you've not heard of Big Commerce, let me just take a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes to go ahead and tell you who we are. We're one of the open source, or sorry, open SaaS platforms for all stages of e-commerce growth, right? We serve companies in the B2B markets from Avery Dennison to Leica and, and the cameras and lenses through the Berlin packaging and Woolrich all the way down into B2C like companies, skull candy, or even fashion people like Notori. And if unfortunately like me during COVID and lockdown, you'd be needing a lot of it, even Ben and Jerry's ice cream as well. So we serve a whole range of constituents when it comes to e-commerce. We talk about this open SaaS environment, Mark talks about it, but what really is it? It takes the combination of open source where freedom, flexibility, innovation, the ability for your developers to go ahead and build things with the blend of SaaS, where traditionally SaaS itself has been closed. If you're waiting for an update, it will come eventually, but it's more of a closed off platform. And we kind of sit in the middle of this, where we've opened up about 90% of our platform through APIs so that you can build beautiful, delighting websites. So we're in the B2B business, we're also in the B2C business as well. And we're intentionally disruptive in the, um, API world to try and make sure that you, as you build out these experiences for your customers, the people that matter the most to your site are really rich and empowering. And again, that's why we want to talk about 3D and AR. Let's go to the next slide. Um, if you haven't heard about us, we are leading in the market today. Um, just this year, we were named as a strong performer by Forrester, Ghana called as a contender in the marketplace. And then IDC has come out and said that we're actually a leader in the space as well. So, you know, we have really been moving our product roadmap and our platform and our delivery of rich new features. Again, if you think about open SaaS, the combination of open source and, and SaaS itself, but being open, what it allows us to do is the things that you don't need to worry about. The security, the PCI compliance, continuous updates and new features 
are being delivered every day on the platform. And because of that and our vision for the roadmap, we are being claimed as being a leader in the markets, marketscape itself. Let's go to the next slide. Um, for B2B specifically, right? Um, when I meet with some of our B2B customers, one of the common threads that they tell me is their ability to innovate in the platform. So if you're ex experimenting with new markets or sub brands, if you're trying to figure out where to go to next and what you should be doing, the cool thing about the big commerce platform is not only that we are strong in e-commerce, but we also have some tremendous partners, 3Kit being one of the, the newest ones to, to the club, so to speak. But our partners allow you to go ahead and test and learn. Some of our, our customers, and I'm going to sort of sort of talk about Berlin packaging for a second. You know, they know what they need to be doing, but they're unsure sometimes about all the technology that they may want to use. So they test it. They look at a certain region from a B2B perspective, and they integrate the technology via an API into our platform to see if it works. And if it works in a way that they are measuring it, they go ahead and expand it to other areas as well. So the platform provides relevant industry leading options for you to choose, as well as being built on cloud SaaS microservices itself. So we prioritize this business user experience for you and you get to test and learn and use it in the way that you want to use it. So again, more recognition from the industry. Let's go to the next slide. So what's happening in e-commerce, right? Uh, this should not be anything new to anybody. Everything has accelerated. That sort of 10 year growth that everybody was expecting in the e-commerce market has accelerated to today. You yourself has probably ha have had to adapt or adopt new ways of shopping. Maybe you are in a current lockdown. Maybe you are blending, going out sometimes, but not all the time, but you're using buy online pickup in store, maybe using buy online pickup curbside. Undoubtedly, it's all changed. And the experience, the experience is really what matters the most nowadays because the consumers, the shoppers are expecting differentiated shopper experiences. So we know that the, the retail landscape has started to change, but there is still more to come. So what I'm trying to say here is, look, start to think about adapting and adopting new technologies that can really deliver a strong user experience because this is not going away. Yes, we're gonna come out of COVID at some point in time, but those expectations of the customers, your shoppers are not going to change. And in the B2B world, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, their experiences and their expectations are that still of the B2C world. So we have to adopt the technologies of the B2C to enable our B2B buyers. Yeah, Let's go to the next slide. One of the things you say about that is so many, you know, especially as younger people, millennials come up in the workforce, those people are starting to have buyer decision-making power. And so now they're starting to say, Hey, I'm on Amazon all day. I'm on TikTok. I'm on YouTube. Uh, can I buy this $50,000 machine that I need for my job? You know, as, as a purchaser, can I buy it online and can I buy it seamlessly? That's starting to be a real question in the B2B landscape. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And it's, it's everything that we do in the search world or we want to look at things, right? Um, you're buying in bulk in a B2B world, right? So they want to make sure that the business decisions, the buying decisions they're about to make are the right ones. So they do want to, I'm going to use the word interrogate your product offering. They want to be able to fly in, see it, interrogate it, look at it, view it. And if you're using augmented reality, maybe go ahead and place it in some kind of environment um, just to say, hey, yeah, this kind of looks good. It's going to fit. It's going to work. Um, because they're buying in bulk, right? And they want to make sure that those decisions are right. So the B2C-like experiences, because of millennials, have transferred into the B2B world. You're absolutely correct. Let's move to the next slide. So, you know, um, here we're just talking about um, B2Bs are going to be at court flat-footed if you, if you delay your investments in this type of uh, investment today. So you've got to make the investments. So I was looking at a report last night, 2018, only 50% of B2B businesses had an online e-commerce presence. So I'm pretty sure that the other 50% haven't caught up. There's a percentage of them that have. But if you don't have a B2C or a B2B-like experience today, you're missing out on opportunity, right? And if one thing COVID has taught us is that B2B businesses have also started to look at the B2C world as well. So this hybrid model is becoming bigger. So if you just think about it of 
well, B2B buyers, they need these experiences for, because the millennials are now doing the business buying. Yeah, that's true. But the B2B businesses are also beginning to expand their operations and their ability to sell direct to consumers as well. And that's where the experiences are going to delight. And why, why would, would I sort of harp on about that? Because it creates an ambassador for your product. If they really like it, they like the experience of finding it, searching for it, you know, looking at it online and interrogating that product, they're probably going to tell somebody about it versus being a detractor and saying, yeah, it was a terrible shopping experience. I just didn't enjoy it. I'm not going to go to that site again. So we've become fickle shoppers. We were fickle before COVID. We're probably more fickle on who we recommend to others. Let's go to the next slide. So um, I kind of summed this up already, but 68% of B2B buyers prefer to conduct uh, research online instead of speaking with a salesperson. Unfortunately, that's the world we're living in, right? We are you know, remote because of COVID. We're separated by six feet at, at best uh, when it comes to going outdoors. But this is the new world where they're not able and they don't want to talk to salespeople. How many of you don't want to talk to salespeople yourselves because you view them as the used car sales rep of the world and you don't believe everything that they say. So at the end of the day, you're gonna go do your own research, right? Exactly the same thing that, that I've been doing here in Austin, Texas. I need to replace 48 windows inside of my house. I had a sales rep come, he gave me the dog and pony show. He actually had a, a case with a window in it and he told me all the ins and outs of the window and how great it was. I ended up going online and doing my own search and, and research after that because I just, I was tired of the one hour sales rep experience. But if you're a seller today, the best way to sell your product is to enable the customer that you're selling to to have an experience and a rich experience with it. And 44% of businesses say that e-commerce sites influence at least half of their offline purchases, right? Because people remember these things. They remember that experience that they had. Oh, yes, I remember that KitchenAid tool or something else. And hey, if you can connect them to that immersive experience of AR and 3D, it gives them an extra connection and an extra way to go ahead and talk about it, right? So, and as, as Mark already talked about, right? Um, millennial buyers are expecting B2C-like experiences when it comes to B2B. So let's go to the next slide. So digital expectations are rising, right? Um, percentage of people who agree that shopping technologies and innovations improve their experience, 80%, right? So if you can drive a much richer experience for somebody, right? They're going to be online buying from you versus in-store versus mobile devices. Now I'll say this on the mobile. Mobile is on the rise. And that's why you're seeing things like PWAs, React, and everything else in the technology spectrum come to play because they want to have these rich like experiences on their tablets and on their mobile devices. And we've only just started to crack the whole mobile world when it comes to e-commerce. So expect that to change, right? Because People believe that new technologies will improve the purchasing process. And that is a connection as to why Mark and Chris are going to talk about AR and 3D, right? New technologies improve the processes. They're not designed to slow them down. They're designed to give richer experiences for the buyers themselves. Let's go to the next slide. And one, one thing to call out there is, you know, the, the biggest innovation that Apple came out with recently on their latest iPhone is the LiDAR scanner. Yep. You know, so it's like that ability to, and that LiDAR scanner is used to place objects in your play, in your space. So it's, you know, the biggest innovation for Apple on their latest iPhone is how do I place something in my space so people can look at it and buy it most likely. So it's, um, yeah, you know, like Megan was saying, it's, it's all about the innovation on mobile and creating that experience. And the, the big brands, the platforms, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, you know, Google, they're, they're focused on that. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to sort of end it. Uh, after this slide, but for me, it's the richness of the customer experience, right? And I, I love you if you're listening to this, just to think about this. 77% of customers have chosen, recommended, or paid more for a brand that provides a personalized service or experience. Why? Because you're creating something that may be unique to me. It may not be truly unique because you're providing the same experience to everybody, but I feel like you care. You're giving me the opportunity to do something that is unique and different. And more than likely, I'm going to share that experience with somebody else and tell them to go look, right? How many of us have queued up early for Thanksgiving sales or have queued up for the latest iPhone um, to, to order that and to go ahead and get it, right? I personally, 
I'm waiting for November 6th when I think it's the iPhone 12 Pro Max, whatever it is to come out, because I do want to go ahead and get that for some of the, the capabilities that Mark has talked about, right? So I'm willing to be able to provide that because I'm consistently getting messages from Apple on my phone, on my tablet about it and the experiences that this new phone is gonna be able to drive for me, right? Consequently, 57% of shoppers um, have said that they've stopped buying from a merchant because a competitor offered a better experience. So this is a competitive world. I can't walk into a store necessarily to go find and buy something. It's hard for B2B sellers to go ahead and promote and sell. But if you can give a rich, immersive experience, more than likely you're gonna go ahead and convert somebody itself. So let's go to the next slide. And I'll hand it back over to you. Oh, thanks, Megan. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I think we're we're lucky to to kind of be in the same space and be partnered with with you all. And um, I, I thought what, what I could do is give a real quick background for everyone on Three Kid, and then um, you know hand it over to Tony and really go through uh, show you all the three D and augmented reality and virtual photography that we do. So, real quick about us. Um, our company goes back to uh, 2005. Our founder was a designer in Hollywood and focused on making explosions look real, um, making you know smoke and gas and all these things in Hollywood movies. That's all based on really intricate, high-level 3D artistry. Um, you know, but what he thought is, hey, instead of designing this stuff, why don't I create software to better render uh, these movies? His technology actually is still used in about a third of Hollywood films today. Um, but what happened was around 2016, WebGL came out, which allowed people to show 3D online really easily. And these companies, particularly luxury companies, reached out to Ben, our founder, and said, hey, can you show, can you use your Hollywood technology to show our products in 3D? And so for a few years there, he was operating kind of like an agency model. Um, and then about two years ago, um, you know, decided, hey, let's take this to the next level. Uh, we brought on a sales team, a marketing team, customer success. And we're really about making software that any company in the world can use to show their products in 3D, augmented reality, and virtual photography. You can go to the next slide. Um, you know, big shout out here. We are huge fans of big commerce. Um, you know, really, you know, again, Me Megan didn't say this explicitly, but like we see the, the big commerce solution as the best sort of most reliable way to for folks who kind of want a little bit more functionality than like say a Shopify, um, but also that ability to create this more custom experience. So we're huge fans of big commerce. Um, you know, 3 kit brings the power of 3D and AR and virtual photography to big commerce merchants. And we're really proud about this partnership. Um, we're also one of the first companies to be part of the big commerce page builder, which means that you can easily bring in our widget to show your product in 3D and AR very simply inside of big commerce. The whole reason that we exist say, is Mark, I like the fact that this is Go on. Sorry, Mark, as you can say, I like that it's one click integration, right? So if you want to get access, you want to start using it. Sorry. Yeah. That's that's the point is um you know we are we, we are seeing that 3D is the future and that augmented reality is the future. And now with big commerce, like Megan was saying, you literally just drag and drop and all of a sudden you're, you've got that ability to show AR and 3D inside of big commerce, um, which is unique, really special. What we exist for as a company and what we believe in is that a better visual experience is critical to driving sales, whether it's B2B or B2C. If you can't see and engage with the product, um, you're not going to buy it. Um, some retailers have reported that they see 11 times more, uh, more likely to purchase when people use AR. In 2016, um, buyers were saying they needed to see three pictures on average per product. In 2019, that number was eight. Just to give you an idea, in 2025, that number could be 25. And my question to everyone on the line is, is your business ready to show 10, 20, 30, 50 pictures or, you know, an yeah, a 3D rendering of your product in every single iteration and configuration. Um, it starts to become really tough to take a photo of every of every aspect. So that's what 3Kit is here for. You know, I want to talk about um, two tactics. Uh, I'm a big fan of webinars of getting really tactical. And, you know, 
the first thing you need to do, and this is particularly relevant for B2B companies, is please, 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 and I see this all the time as a person who, who makes a lot of uh, kind of buying decisions on the business side, let your customers explore your product first. 68% of buyers do not want to talk to sales first. They want to know for a fact, does this, person, does this company sell the thing that I want and can I build it myself? By the way, as you can see here, um, this is a differentiating experience. When someone can engage with your product, customize it, spin it, put it in their space, you're differentiating your brand. You're driving that confidence that creates an environment where someone's saying, hey, I can service this myself and I'm confident in this company to deliver something that I want. Great. You know, if, if, you, if you can't allow your customers to buy online, at least they know for a fact they want it and they can get in touch with sales and go through that process. <clears throat> And then, you know, another aspect here is a lot of folks, you know, have a product that you want to create an ongoing relationship with customers. And what you see over here on the right is, a, you know, a John Deere tractor. And you can see that you're able to, if you are a service technician, for example, or a regular user of this, of this uh, John Deere tractor, you're able to explode it. And let's say if a part had broken or needs servicing, you can easily select that part and check it out so that you can easily get that part sent and, you know, get your tractor fixed. Um, this is great for up sales. Uh, if you're a salesperson, you're showing someone a product, you're then able to break it apart and say, hey, why don't you add this piece? Um, you know, it's gonna make your tractor run better. So um, great option here for maintaining that relationship with someone, for selling them more, for showing them exactly how the product works. Or if something breaks, you got a service technician who can easily select that part, you know, without having to go through a really crazy extreme Excel list and maybe making their own selection. They can just see the visual, select it, and they're on their way. And I kind of covered it, but you know, as 3Kit, we do three things. We do a 3D configurator, which allows you to spin, rotate, you know, customize, and configure a product. We do augmented reality, which allows you to put that product inside of your space. And we do virtual photography, which is creating images um, at a massive scale. We created 3 million images for Crate and Barrel um, in under a month. And so it's just that amazing high, high sort of fidelity visual that you can get at a massive scale. So those are the three things we do. And I know that we're running a little bit tight on time. Tony, would you mind if I actually just toss it over to you? Um, I'll, I'll put that up at the end, y'all. Uh, if you want to scan that with your phone camera, that'll let you uh, engage with a little bit of um, 3Kit. You can see our 3D models um, and how it all works for big commerce. So, open up your phone camera, you can scan that, a link will pop up and just click it and you can uh, check it out. But I'd like to toss sure. it over now to Tony and uh, let's uh, let's see a few examples if we can. Sure thing. And why don't I actually just start off with that same site. Uh, so Svetla, if you want to um, uh, stop sharing, I'll, uh, I'll just go ahead and pull up that same site that the QR code would have taken us to so we can at least kind of get an idea of what you'll be looking at once um uh, once we do bring that qr code back and you can actually scan it with your telephone uh, but here we just have a little micro site we've tossed a few different demo examples up here that you can configure uh, configure on your own everything is configurable and everything is also prepped for augmented reality uh, with the exception of that watch there so just uh, i'll show one example here and that'll be just very simply this KitchenAid mixer and the idea like mark was talking about uh, from a 3Kit standpoint, whether it's 3D configuration, whether it's augmented reality, or what we're calling virtual photographer, which is our ability to take all of those configurations, all of those 3D models, and actually render those out into photorealistic 2D imagery. We'll take a look at all of those here shortly. But of course, this first example is just going to be a very simple 3D configuration. And in this case, also just a very simple little color change when it comes to this KitchenAid mixer. Uh, what we did want to call out with this particular example, however, is when it comes to augmented reality, uh, 3Kit is actually uh, driving a configured augmented reality experience. So again, here's that same uh, here's that same website. This is what you'll be interacting with on your telephone once you scan that QR code. Uh, but as I make my color changes here, we don't want to just show a static augmented reality file, but of course, actually export what the user has selected and export that out into augmented reality. So I've got that view in your space button there. And we can see now, right, this is actually that kind of uh, metallic gray or silver finish that I selected there at the end. So whether it's 
in the case of something like furniture, where spatial concerns are, are very practical and, and relevant, uh, even something like a KitchenAid mixer, making sure that there's enough counter space for it, but then also stylistically making sure that it matches the decor, if it's furniture, that it matches the flooring and the walls and everything else. Uh, so again, wanting to emphasize that configured augmented reality for whatever the customer is looking into purchasing. Uh, so the next example here, we'll actually spend some time with um, kind of a more involved 3D, 3D model here. This is actually in a big commerce store. <clears throat> Excuse me, and like Megan Mark were talking about, from an integration standpoint, this is using big commerce new uh, component kind of widgets. So as we were talking about earlier in the presentation, right, just simply install 3Kit. Uh, and now we're actually dragging and dropping components into our product pages, into our blog pages, into our home pages, wherever we want the user to start interacting with, again, that fully embedded 3D model. Uh, and one thing to kind of emphasize here, again, is it's 100% web-based, so we're uh, not having to download additional browser plugins. If I'm on my telephone, I do not have to download additional applications. It's all 100% browser-based. And again, shipping over that full 3D model. So as I go through my configuration here, it's relatively straightforward, relatively simple. I've got things like simple color changes, uh, right, and I can target different areas within my 3D model itself so that I can be very precise about what I want to configure as I work my way through. And not just things like material and color changes, but of course also configuring the physical shape of what that product is. So here in the front, do I wanna have maybe just a solid, um, a, a solid panel here, different, a couple of different screen options, right, where we're now actually componentizing the physical uh, the physical product itself, compo componentizing it down to uh, kind of its lowest common denominator and now just dynamically stitching that product together. So in this case, as I work my way around, uh, maybe we'll add a different charger over here to, uh, to the right-hand side. Um, as I start to configure this, I've got with the different color, uh, excuse me, with the different color options and all of my different attachment and component options, I've literally got hundreds of different permutations that I can configure. And all of this is actually being driven from just a few base component 3D models. So by no means do I have to go in and configure hundreds of different models. Uh, by no means do I have to create hundreds of different augmented reality files. Instead, we're gonna let 3Kit drive that configuration. And then of course, not just visualize everything in 3D from a purchasing standpoint, but also dynamically render that into augmented reality. Uh, so just kind of moving through here, I know we've got some, uh, some other folks left. I'll show uh, another quick example here. Uh, Mark actually had this uh, in the same slide uh, that he was um, uh, reviewing a minute ago. Uh, but just wanted to show that live example as well. The idea here being that since it is a 3D model, that means it's composed of all of my different components and bits and pieces. So that's how we can actually start to move things apart, right? And actually just visualize, for example, maybe a simple product explosion. And if we look over here in my product description, we can see I can now start to click around and actually select those different parts. Uh, in this case, right, I'm <clears throat> highlighting my air filter. We can see that highlight in green, uh, right? If we wanted to do something like, let's say, for example, when something is no longer um, in stock or we're running low on inventory, maybe I want to have that highlighted in red. Uh, so a lot of different things that you can do from, um, uh, from a configuration standpoint that really drive that user experience. And we'll go ahead and just add a few things to my shopping cart here. And again, we can now actually see those individual bits and pieces. So like Mark was saying, it's not just a matter of that kind of initial sale where maybe I have a very highly configurable product. I can see this in hundreds, if not thousands. And for some of our customers, hundreds of millions of different permutations of their products and how they can sell those products. But now what do we do once we've actually sold to that customer? Um, more of that kind of customer life cycle or that full uh, customer 360, where now we're able to help support that customer from an ongoing maintenance standpoint, from continued installation, uh, or even if we need to send out from more of an internal standpoint, send out a service technician to go repair, whether it's a lawnmower or whether it's a solar system uh, on the roof of the home. So very last thing I'll show here, uh, Mark was talking about also this concept of virtual photographer. So I'll just very quickly show one other example. And we can start to see here now that the use cases um, uh, it's, it's very broad. Uh, really, the, the only requirement is that there's a, a physical product that can be sold in more than just one way. And whether it's more of that manufacturing emphasis where I'm selling through distribution or I'm selling to, selling to different businesses, if I'm selling to consumers and it's furniture or it's, it's KitchenAid mixers, 
uh, or if I'm doing apparel. Um, and in this case, when it comes to apparel, we want the visual quality to be at that next level. Not to say that the KitchenAid mixer didn't look pretty real, but when it comes to apparel, we really wanna be able to focus in on things like the threading and the stitching and even all the designs of my different fabrics. So what we're looking at here is I work my way through all of these different, uh, different shirt fabrics, shirt colors. I've got different designs, right? So not just solids, but even striped and checkered, um, checkered fabrics. Uh, none of these are photos. These are actually all renders from 3D models. And again, not just fabrics, but as I work my way down, similar to those other examples we were seeing with that um, electric vehicle charger, for example, right, even physical changes to the product itself. So I've got a few different collars here. I've got a few different cuff sizes here. Again, all of this coming from 3D models, which we then cycle through all of the different combinations of how can I assemble that shirt physically with my different pockets, collars, and cuffs and render that out into these photorealistic 2D images, cycling through, in this case, hundreds of fabrics and about 20 different combinations of a physical shirt. Uh, again, I've got thousands of different combinations of this shirt and by no means did someone go through and physically fold pristinely that shirt thousands of times and take pictures emphasizing all the details thousands of times. Uh, we just do that through 3Kit using what's a, um, what we're calling virtual photographer. Um, so with that, I know we kind of uh, uh, hustled through a number of different examples there, uh, but we've got some uh, some additional content here. So I'll pass the uh, screen share back to um, uh, to Svetla, I believe Christopher is up next, and hopefully we'll have some time to um, uh, share that QR code again with you so you can get your hands on and try some of those examples. And also, of course, answer any questions as we get to the end. Thanks, Tony. And someone asked uh, what industries benefit best from 3D or 3Kit and 3D AR. Um, I, I would say... If you have a product that is customizable or configurable, i.e. there are a lot of different uh, rules and changes around colors, materials, or add-ons to it, um, that's a great fit because it becomes very difficult to photograph every single different iteration or customization. So thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, Chris, do you want to take over? Sure. All right. So here at Red Stage, just to give you a little background, uh, we create B2B digital leaders through our enterprise level design, development, strategy, and support. Our designers, consultants, and engineers are handpicked from the very industries that we serve, you know, to help give you better insight to solve your uh, specific business needs. And our team will help your business navigate the vast digital landscape by implementing effective e-commerce solutions, uh, which allow you to focus on your core business. And this is a, a case study that we just released uh, with the binding source. And, and this is an example of what we mean by creating uh, B2B digital leaders. Um, through working with us, they've experienced a 170% increase in conversion rate, as well as 30% uh, 33% increase in transactions, all within the first month of launching on big commerce. Um, Red Sage is also a big commerce elite partner. Uh, just something else uh, to point out there. Next slide, slide please. So as you all know, user experience is the name of the game. And the current changing in shopping habits, uh, especially now post COVID, uh, require new customer experiences, um, especially when it comes to getting you conversions. So why is it so important to invest in AR now? In two words, digital, digital transformation. I'm sure a bunch of you on the line, um, when COVID first struck, may you a lot of you may have been behind on your digital transformation journey, and maybe we're not completely set up for e-commerce or we're scrambling to get that same kind of experience that uh, we're so used to going to, to, uh, to malls and stores. Um, but the current value of the AR market right now stands at 3.5 billion and is forecast to hit 70 to 75 billion in, um, by 2023. And especially AR in this post COVID world, AR has the unique ability to engage your customers like never before. 
Uh, customers can now virtually experience the look and feel of the product that traditional photographs just can't match. You know, just like Mark was saying, you need to take uh, thousands, you know, 10, 20, 30 photos to get the kind of um, views that that you can experience with uh, with uh, 3D on 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 your website. You know, and um, to, we, according to the study at retail, um, I'm sorry. Um, if you all can just uh, do me a favor and just scan that code that's on the on the uh, picture there with your phone, you can uh, get the link and get to experience the same uh, some of our projects that we're doing in AR. And uh, as you're doing that, I'll just read you some stats. According to the study by RetailPerceptions.com, 71% of consumers say they would shop more often on a site that has AR versus traditional photography. 61% of consumers say they'd prefer retailers with AR experiences. And 40% of those customers say they would pay more for a product that they could customize and see in AR, just like uh, 3Kit is offering. And it's important to know that the majority of, you, of AR users right now fall into the 16 to 34 age group. So as Mark was talking about and Megan was talking about, especially with the B2B world, as these people become um, buyers in, in those um, segments, they're going to expect these kind of um, experiences because that's what they've grown up with. Uh, next slide, please. So again, sadly, no one is going to the store these days to interact with products as much as they used to. And your customers not only want AR, but are going to expect very shortly um, that you have it and it's gonna become a standard in the e-commerce experience. Uh, we right now, we have the ability to add annotations about the specific features as well as product dimensions. And as Mark showed you, you can actually, you know, blast apart the, you know, the product and show different pieces that you might be able to reorder and upsell at a different time. Um, and just to let you guys know that Amazon recognizes the importance of augmented reality and is steadily offering AR on more of their products by the week. And if you're going to compete with Amazon, you better be offering the same, if not better, shopping experience. Um, as Megan was stating before with, the, with B2B, uh, we are constantly seeing Amazon creep more into the B2B space um, than you would really think. Uh, we had one customer um, that sold uh, chemicals and we actually showed them online that Amazon is selling a drum of chemicals <laughs> that they supposedly thought were, they were the only ones selling it online. So, um, you know, you better be offering the same, if not better shopping experience. Uh, next slide. So this morning I just read in Yahoo Finance um, that Adobe Analytics is estimating that online holiday sales could hit a record one, um, 189 billion. So just think about that for a minute. How many of you miss going to the mall or a store? You know, from a website, how do you know what a ring will look like on your fiance's finger from just photographs? Or how those diamond earrings will look in her ear? Or my favorite, sunglasses. I can't tell you how many times I would spend hours in the sunglass hut trying on pairs of sunglasses, searching for the right look. And, you know, I'm always super hesitant to order glasses online. You know, I think maybe maybe my head's too big or too narrow or something like that. You know, I feel like it, it, you need that personalized touch of going on and trying it on. Um, but now you're going to be able to start doing that with augmented reality. Um, and so just to go back to what Mark was showing you, you know, there's, there's three types really of, of experiences going on right now. You have the, uh, on, on the desktop, you have the 3D view where you can rotate around, zoom in, zoom out, look at all the different angles. Uh, if you're, if you happen to be on a mobile phone, you would, ex instead of that, you would experience the augmented reality where you can actually place the item into your room and take a look. Uh, from all different angles. And then you get the high resolution uh, photographs out of it. But now with, with the iPhone, 
and the iPhone 12 and, and soon to be all the Samsung devices with LiDAR capabilities coming in here. You know, now we get into something that I don't think anybody has really touched on yet, but it, it's computer vision, right? LiDAR is just a part, is a measuring device of computer vision. It's getting the computer to understand your environment that you're sitting in. Um, so now trying on that wedding ring or having the ability to um, replace a refrigerator or stove in your own kitchen without having to like try to like angle it around on your phone and move it around. You're going to have that ability to do that um, with, with, with LIDAR. And um, just imagine if you were able to pick up a tennis racket in hand and swing it around and you know, see what it looks like in hand. Is that the, is that the product that you're looking for? And, and it's a lot easier for people, especially non-creatives to sit and see something like that than try to imagine what it will look like. Um, and the best part is, is that your potential customers can record these AR interactions and socially share them for opinions, just like Megan was stating. Um, and they will. So think about the outreach that you'll have by simply letting people do what they do. And, you know, talk about subconscious viral marketing, you know, something that you never even planned for. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So here's a concept we're working on with Panini. Now, Panini makes trading cards and the trading card really hasn't changed since inception in the 1860s, right? Essentially, it's just a printed piece of cardboard. So how do you revolutionize or even evolve the trading card? Well, now with today's technology coupled with computer vision, we have the ability to recognize the trading card's graphics, initiate AR and bring it to life with animation and sound. We also have the ability to provide uh, on the shelf and on the shelf AR experience uh, to further entice customers to make purchases. So when we get to go back to the store um, and, and, and have that experience, you know, just like example of this box, you know, a customer could see this box on the shelf and hold their phone up to it and see what the experience, the augmented experience will be life like right there in store, which will help entice them to make that purchase. Next slide, please. So again, scan this uh, th QR code. Uh, you can get to experience uh, um, a stove we did for a customer. Um, but I don't know about all of you, but I'm a, I'm a very visual person. So let's say that I'm building a new gym or better yet a distribution warehouse. You know, Rather than taping out footprints of machinery, imagine you can just hold your phone and see what that machine will look like in its place you know does it need to be rotated does it need to be pushed in pushed back imagine if you're trying to do that with tape on the floor how time consuming that can be and it still doesn't really give you a sense of how much space you're going to need to work around that machine also in 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 that warehouse so having ar uh, for manufacturing distribution is 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 something that's you know i think is is really handy you know, um, one thing, one thing I'd add, Chris, if I can, is, you know, what we've seen with a lot of our customers is even when you're buying a super complex, heavy piece of machinery, you know, their software like three kit can share the QR code to the exact piece of machinery that you configured. Now, all of a sudden you're sending that piece, that 3d model and augmented reality experience to, you know, if you're the salesperson, you're sending it to your decision maker. The decision maker's boss is now getting it. The decision maker's boss's boss, and it's making its way around, you know, the factory, if you will, or the buyer, up and down, which is exactly what you want. You want to get more sort of threaded inside of that organization. Hey, this QR code makes its way around because it's novel. People will see something in AR and they say, "Wow, okay, I can actually see this million-dollar machine inside of my space," and it works. You know, it sort of like drives more confidence, drives engagement with what you're trying to do. It really, it, you know, it makes the difference. 
Yeah. Or, you know, if you were someone in HR and you were trying to set up a kitchen or common space, you know, is, is the things that you're looking to buy matching the motif that you're trying to set up for your office and, and, you know, having the ability to, to put the things in place right then and there on the spot, you know, just makes the decision to purchase that item even greater. Uh, next slide, please. So today, manufacturers are using AR to help speed up production and reduce overhead and limit mistakes. Uh, I have another example, like say you're a major packaging supplier and before you send your customer a, um, a, a spec piece that has the custom label uh, for your package, you can now send your proof to them with a augmented reality model so that they can actually see the package on their desk, make sure that the, the, the label is looking properly and be able to give you an answer right then and there instead of waiting for weeks. Not, you know, not only are you saving money on the shipping, the production of it, but most importantly, the wasted time it takes you to get that sign off. Um, you can, again, like Mark was saying, you could send your customer a QR code. They open it up on their smartphone or tablet and they see it in real time on their desk or, or office space instantaneously. You know, maybe you, even while you're on the phone with them, you know, and you get that approval. I mean, imagine how cool that is. Um, so as far as maintenance goes, you know, uh, a lot of what a lot of technicians are having the ability to be to do now with AR is actually guide themselves through installations, you know, let's say of a, you know, a jet engine, you know, or let's say an inspector needs to look at a pump underground in a sewer, you know, they can hold their phone up and they can look at, uh, you know, let's say a sub pump and, and, and they can automatically tell you what the defects are, you know, will the upgrade of the, the new pump fit, what other materials might you need? Again, this is upsell opportunities. You know, having the ability to use AR to guide or inspect prior installation will reduce mistakes, reduce the time it takes to fix, saving the owner on thousands of overhead. And here are some things to think about. And this is just an overall uh, view of, of the whole industry as a whole. Apple, Apple is planning to launch their AR glasses soon, um, which they recently acquired Spaces, which is a VR company. Google has invested billions into Magic Leap. They produce a head-mounted retina display called Magic Leap One. Facebook acquired Oculus. Microsoft has the HoloLens. Snapchat has raised a billion dollars just for AR. And I personally know they're trying to leverage AR in retail. Wayfair, Walmart, Ikea, Target are all heavily invested in AR. And I'm telling you all this today so you, that you don't miss the boat and have to play catch up. If you wait until you lose market share and be a reactionary, it will already be too late. So just think about your digital transformation most of you have undertook because of this pandemic. I mean, who would have imagined this is where we'd be today? Next slide. So de demystifying some AR implementation. Um, so implementing AR is faster and easier than you think. You know, a lot of you already have CAD models of your products that you've used to go into production, which we can take and simplify, or we can even model products for you based on high res photography. We can also inject AR capabilities on any website, on any page. And no, it does not slow your site down. Um, there isn't a need anymore for an app. That's old technology. So don't be fooled by companies offering older solutions out there. Trust me, you don't need an app. Mark will agree with me. Um, making your user download an app just to uh, experience AR is at, at the core, bad user experience. Um, I think today AR is more than a nice to have, it's a must to have. And it's not just novelty, it's an alternative of what shopping was like before the virus. A time when you could leisurely go to a store and simply play with a product, to view it in hand, to see it in front of you, to walk it around it, see all the sides rather than just imagining through still photos. It makes you have that feeling of wonderment. 
Like when we were kids walking down 34th Street with our parents gazing into Macy's fake snow falling and shiny new products, all wide-eyed and wishing. The truth is those days are over, at least in the immediate future. But augmented reality will allow your customers to make more informed purchasing decisions, engage your customers, and in the end, the user experience that will get you what you ultimately desire, which are conversions. So I just wanna thank everyone for taking their time today to watch our presentation. And uh, I can throw it back to, uh, back to you. Nice, thank you. Um, you know, we're, we, we operate as a team between three kid, uh, big commerce and red stage. And, you know, if, if you're hearing something interesting today, um, you know, that next step for you all, if you're interested, let's get a demo, you know, let's, let's show you what we can do for your business, um, whether it be 3d and AR or, or the open SaaS framework that big commerce is delivering so well. So appreciate everyone joining. Um, you know, I know we're, we're pretty tight on time. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead. It, it, you know, Megan, did you want to, it seemed like you had one more note. Did you want to just quick, uh, um, no, I, I, I just put it in chat that to, to enable this is a one click app install, go to the big commerce marketplace. If you're a big commerce customer, that's all. Uh, I think after listening to Chris though, I need to go watch miracle on 34th street. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was a, a beautiful, uh, you know, kind of vision. I was, I was moved right there. Um, Cool. You know, I, I want to be respectful of everyone's time and make sure that you have time to, um, you know, get ready for that next meeting. But again, I want to say thank you to everyone for joining. Um, you know, please get in touch. Um, you know, and I, I know we've got a few questions on here. I'll, I'll follow up in the email. But uh, like I said, I appreciate everyone joining. Um, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Megan. Um, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Svetla. I really appreciate you all, you all joining us. And uh, just love the partnership and thank you to everyone who joined the on, on the webinar. Indeed. Take care and be safe. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Thanks. everyone. Thank you guys. Bye.